Well, this past uh, week, Jan and I spent some time together at Lake Mineral Well State Park. Uh, we did uh, uh, a little bit of camping in our little trailer. We, we hiked along the trails uh, that uh, surrounded the lake and, and beyond. Um, at one point, we came to a sign that said, uh, Primitive Camping Area 2.5 Miles. And we thought, you know, we just need to go check out what exactly a primitive camping area is. And so we began down this, this steep grade uh, that was winding down toward the lake, I suppose. And, and uh, we went through a, a couple of valleys and up again and, and came up the other side. And then we got into this long stretch of, of what I would call pasture land with lots of mesquite trees and, and oak trees and rocks and, and such. And at one point, Jan says, are we there yet? And uh, I, I just kind of laughed under my breath because she didn't know that I was, gonna, I was starting a new sermon series this morning uh, called, Are We There Yet? And so uh, I kind of laughed under my breath. I also uh, thought about my childhood when we would go on vacation. You know, early on we went, always went to Ridosa, and, and I would always ask that question. Uh, later on, when in the teenage years, we always went to South Padre Island, which was a, quite a bit farther. And so uh, that, that question would always come up. Are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? The point is uh, we long to, to uh, get where we're going. Uh, the problem is, uh, a lot of times, we don't know where we're going. Uh, we don't know where we're going. We just, we just long to, to get there. We long to be there. We long to, uh, uh, to be somewhere. We have, these, we, we have these dreams and we have these visions of, of that place being a wonderful place. Uh, it really doesn't have to be a physical place. It, uh, Mostly it should be a, an inward place, a, a place of, of peace in our hearts and our minds, our bodies and our souls. Uh, so my first question this morning is, do you have this kind of peace uh, in your life? Are you at peace uh, in the depths of your soul? We begin a new uh, Advent uh, journey, or we begin an Advent journey. This is the first Sunday of Advent. So we begin this Advent journey this morning. And it's a time of preparation. We, we see the, all the preparation that has taken place in our sanctuary this morning for Advent. So it's a time of preparation. It's a time of anticipation. Uh, it's a time of expectation. And it's a, a time of preparing our hearts and our minds uh, for the comings of Christ. Comings with an S. The comings of Christ. Because uh, we, we anticipate and then we celebrate the birth of Christ once again. And we prepare our hearts and our minds uh, for that. Uh, we we uh, uh, anticipate uh, Christ coming in, in word. And, and in spirit, we've been in a whole season of Pentecost where we've uh, went, gone with the early church through, uh, through the, the uh, early days of the church by way of the Holy Spirit. And then we, we think about the comings of Christ, His return when He comes back in final victory. So we have these, we have these comings uh, that, we, that we celebrate uh, when we begin Advent. In our Isaiah text this morning, we have two texts I want to look at this morning. Isaiah chapter 2 and Matthew chapter 24. So in, in our Isaiah text this morning, this reading uh, dreams of that day, that anticipated day, uh, that, that perfect day. The Matthew reading uh, warns us to be prepared uh, for that day. And it's in the knowing of and the preparing for uh, these comings of Christ that make the journey worthwhile and manageable. So let's, let's take a look at these scriptures. First Isaiah chapter 2, the first five verses. Hear the word of the Lord. The word that Isaiah son of Amaz saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that He may teach us His ways, and that we may walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth, 
instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And then in Matthew 24, beginning with verse 36. About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the fields, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The dream or vision described in Isaiah this morning has not yet come to pass. It is longed for. It is hoped for. It is anticipated. It's a journey that they are in, uh, in, in the midst of. It's a journey that they are in the midst of, but not there yet. Right now, there is not much going on that's, that's right in their lives. Jerusalem and, and Judah have been uh, ravaged by war. There is mass idolatry. The people are self-centered. They neglect uh, the poor and the needy and the stranger in their midst. They are a corrupt and evil society and will surely self-destruct if they do not repent, change their ways, turn around and go in the opposite direction. But how do they do that? How do they get off this rugged trail that, that leads to nowhere but, but exhaustion and misery and, and pain? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever been on a trail such as that? I remember back in the early days of marriage and family uh, when, when the bills were piled high. Uh, I was out of work because of an injury and Jan was nine months pregnant and on maternity leave. We had pretty much gone through what little savings we had and I wished I could just go to sleep and wake up a year later and everything be okay. Have you ever thought like that? You know, things were so rough and so rugged in your life. That, you know, you, if I could just go to sleep and, and you know how when you go to sleep in an instant you wake up and the, the night's gone uh, and everything's back to normal. Boy, wouldn't that be nice? that sound familiar? You know, by October of that year, our little blessing was born. In November, I was able to go back to work. December, well, December brought what December always brings. A dream, a vision, uh, like Isaiah had in our text this morning. Everything seems uh, to be perfect. Uh, pretty much at Christmas time. That's what Christmas uh, is all about. You know, you get a Christmas card in the mail and there's a picture of a log cabin in the mountains. Uh, there's fresh snow on the ground. There's smoke coming out of the chimney. A family of deer are, are walking by. And just looking at that picture just brings such a peace. Such a peace. That's such a longing of that, that perfect time. 
catalog start showing up, or they used to when we were young. Now it's emails start popping up, but you know they, the catalog start showing up, and and you have pictures of the perfect families around a perfect fire in a perfect home, uh, and they're gathered around items that we need to buy so we can be like them. Um, then we have these commercials that splash all over the, the TV screens where you see uh, all these perfect families again and, and there's promises of, of love and contentment uh, and, and gadgets that we need. And then there's Christmas trees and Christmas lights and, and banners and Advent wreaths and, and lights on the houses. Santa waving in the store windows. Oh, and then there's the Hallmark movies that always end in, in, in a good way. Uh, a, a way that makes you, feels you, uh, make you feel good on the inside and, and in, a, in a perfect way or such. But you know, perhaps none of those things are, are really what, the way things are. You know, pretty much all of that goes back into the box by January or, or, uh, or, or back into storage uh, by January. But it serves its purpose. It serves its purpose for the season. It brings us joy. It brings us love. It brings us hope. It brings us peace. And it reminds us that peaceful times are coming. In fact, they are here. They are here in the midst of these tender moments if, of our journey if we will just slow down, slow down and, and, and recognize them. Isaiah holds such a vision, a dream, a Norman Rockwell painting, if you will, of a perfect time and a perfect place. A, a time when, when the house of God is high above all other places. And all the people of the entire world, they, they just flock to that place for one reason and one reason only, and that's to worship the one true God. And they're eager to learn His ways and, and follow them, the Scripture says. And they beat their weapons into plowshares, and, and, they, and they use those for providing food for the world. And everyone works and, and, and lives for the common good of all people. And there's no need to learn war anymore because the people have chosen a journey of peace. Wow, what a vision. What a dream. But it's the truth. It's, it's Scripture. It's here. It's the truth. It's on its way. It's the future destination of, of Isaiah's people. It's for us, God's people, for you and for me. It's the, the peace of, of a heart and a mind uh, that, that helps Isaiah's people and helps us get through what we're going through. To, to, to get them turned around and, and, and headed on the right trail. Realizing that God is on that trail with them, that God is in their very midst on this journey with them. And then if we look at the Matthew text, Matthew text addresses the people who, who don't even know there is a journey. They don't even know there's a journey taking place. They're too self-centered. They're too consumed in themselves, as uh, uh, Paul would say in Romans 12 too. They've conformed to the world. They're just going and doing so busily. That the Bible says that they're eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and, and grinding meal together and plowing their fields. These aren't bad things in and of themselves. These are, are things that are part of life. But Jesus wants them to know that He has, he has ushered in the first part of Isaiah's prophecy. The Word has become flesh and dwells among us, John 1.14 says. It's, it's started. Jesus, Jesus has, has started it. It's, 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 it's here. We're in the midst of this journey. And Jesus wants us to pay attention because the fulfillment of that journey is very close. It's almost here. And it will come like a thief in the night when we don't expect it. And those who are not ready for it will miss out. In fact, they are already missing out. And if we're honest with ourselves, we live our lives like we have plenty of time. 
Uh, we, we, I don't think we really believe that, that Christ will come today or tomorrow or next week or even next month. I think it's been so long that we just, we just live life from day to day and, and we get busy and, we, and we, we just are consumed with this world. But that is the way Isaiah and, and Jesus tell us we must live. We must live as Advent people. People who, who do not have perfect lives. They don't even live perfect lives. But they are a people who, who have this anticipation and this expectation uh, that, that, that this final victory that Isaiah sees in this vision is, will come to completion. Do you know what a primitive camping area looks like? It's pretty primitive. Not only is it two and a half miles away, there's nothing there once you get there. And uh, I pretty much wondered if we were there yet too. Not to mention the discouragement knowing that we had a two and a half mile hike back to get to our trailer. And by the time we got there we were panting like road lizards. Are we there yet? No, we're not there yet. But we have this dream. We have this vision. We have Isaiah's prophecy of a perfect time and a perfect place, and it's coming. And we have Jesus' admonition that we must be ready for it because we are in the midst of our journey. We are in the in-between time of Isaiah and, and Jesus' final victory. We are, we are on the journey. We are in the midst of it. And Christ walks with us on this journey. And so as, as Advent people, we, we prepare and we decorate and we celebrate the season of Advent and Christmas because it gives us just a little bit of peace in our lives in the midst of a busy world, a troubled world. We are choosing a time and a place in our hearts and minds, our bodies and our souls where we are at perfect peace. We are, are choosing a journey of peace. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for Isaiah's prophecy. We thank you for, for Matthew's recording of Jesus telling us we must be ready because it's coming. So we pray, Lord, that you would Help us to, to know that you are, you are on your way. In fact, you are in our midst this very moment, traveling with us on this journey, this journey called life. And you come to bring us peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.